Hello everyone, um, I'm Mr Lewis, I'm here to talk to you today about the extended project. I know lots of you will know me already. Um, I'm assistant head here at Eustace Wood. Um, we're in quite an astonishing time at the moment in your learning. Um, things have changed a great deal, things are very different from how you expected them. Um, and in many ways it's an opportunity for you, it's an opportunity for you to learn in a different way. Um, and I want to tell you about one way that you can learn in a slightly different way, and that's through doing an extended project, or at least starting off an extended project here, right here, right now, at the end of year 11 in 2020. Um, we've offered the extended project at Newstead Wood for 11 years now. We were actually there right at the beginning when it started off as a qualification. And it's something which we absolutely love. We think it's very much what we're about as a school. It's about independence. It's about scholarship. It's about research. It's about getting you ready for university. So even though you're just beginning to start off thinking about A-levels at this point and moving towards an A-level mindset, the extended project is actually going to carry you even further towards independence. Um, so I just want to start by asking a few questions and thinking about what it means to be independent. Here we are in the middle of nowhere, isolation. We're on a path, we're on a road. Um, however, look around you. There are all these amazing places, all these amazing ideas that you could explore further. And that's what the EPQ is all about. You're all curious people. By that I mean you're interested in the world, you're interested in ideas, you're interested in knowledge. And the EPQ is a chance for you to go even further in exploring the stuff that you've encountered, that you've come across out there in your reading, in your viewing, things maybe that you had a passing um, acquaintance with in a lesson or in, in an um, article or in a book. And you just thought, OK, that's something I would really, really love to explore further. Well, an EPQ gives you a chance to do that. It gives you a chance to actually take on something new and explore it in masses and masses of depth. So here you are, right now, you've got an opportunity to start looking at a, an EPQ topic. It's not something that's going to be on your um, syllabus, your specification, because for the EPQ there isn't a syllabus or a specification. It's a chance for you to choose something completely new to you that you're interested in to explore further. So the first question I want you to ask yourself is, what do you care about? What are you interested in? What topics um, do you want to find out more about? It could be something you want to go further with at A-level, or at university, either way. Um, it could be something completely unrelated to that. You could just have a passion for something else that you're interested in. Uh, either way, an EPQ can be a chance for you to explore those things in masses of detail. Think about the different parts of your life. You've got your academic subjects, your A-level subjects, You've got perhaps also looming into the future, thinking about your career, thinking about something you might want to do with your life after school, after university is out of the way. Many people will do EPQs based on one of, one of those things. So for example, if you're studying history and there's a particular topic of history that you're really fascinated in, it's not on the A-level specification, but it's something that just you you just love to find out about you can explore it with an EPQ. If you really want to go into uh, veterinary medicine um, and you want to spend some time working with animals and actually doing some research on animal behavior, an EPQ can be a way to explore that. If you want to go into um, to business and you want to try your hands at, at something entrepreneurial, you can run an entrepreneurship pro project as part of the EPQ. You might want to think about yourself. OK, we've all got 
identities. We've all got lives. We've got things that we care about because they're about our family or our race or our culture or our religion. Or those parts of ourselves that matter. It could be about a family story. What happened? To, you want to find out more about what happened to your um, great uncle during the Second World War or something like that. It could be about the other stuff that you do, your hobbies, the things that you do when you're not working really hard at school. Um, there, there have been lots of really good examples of people doing EPQs on just stuff that, that they just enjoy. Like we had a student a few years ago who um, really enjoyed making armour and she made a, she made a chainmail suit for her EPQ. Um, it was nothing to do with her uh, A-levels at all, but it was something that she just felt really passionate about. Maybe you're a passionate bird watcher or a passionate walker or you love making stuff, you love uh, crochet or you love um, gardening or, you know, these kinds of um, hobbies or, or, or you love computer games or you love, um, uh, you know, anything at all. You can explore it. Um, through an EPQ. The other thing you might want to look at is actually looking at the world around you, the world as it is now. You know, we're in a very interesting time of history. There's lots of stuff that you could explore for an EPQ and do some original research, talk to people, measure something, experiment on something. What a fascinating time to be researching. And of course, an EPQ doesn't have to fit into any of these boxes. It could be a combination of lots of these things. So start off with that question. What do I care about? What am I interested in? What, what could I explore further? Once you've decided on a topic like that, you need to start thinking about questions. You know, we all start asking questions when we're very young, like this chap on the screen. Um, children ask questions. They ask questions about the way the world works. And you know, keeping being someone who asks questions about things is really important as an A-level student, as a university student, as an academic thinker. You've got to keep on asking questions, asking interesting questions. It's an absolutely crucial part of being a thinker, being a researcher. The other thing to bear in mind as well is to think about what kind of questions to ask? And you might come up with all sorts of zany, random questions. They wouldn't necessarily be EPQ questions because what we're looking for with an EPQ question is this. We're looking for a good question. What does that mean? It means a good question is something that's unanswered. There isn't an answer out there already. So, for example, if you asked what's the boiling point of water, that's not a very good question because it's Really easy to find it out. Everyone knows it. Um, it's not an interesting question, not a good question. A good question is also complex. What does that mean? It means it has lots of different elements to it. OK, it's not there's not a simple answer. You can't just answer it in a sentence. You've got to answer it in lots of different ways. So, for example, if you're thinking about um, the economic impacts of um, of the Internet, on the world in the last 20 years, you're not going to get a simple answer. There's uh, it, it, lots of different sorts of economic um, changes in terms of the way people work, in terms of the way people travel, in terms of um, the, the supply chain stuff. You know, I, I'm not an economist, but you, you can see that that's a really complex question with a really complex answer. So when you're answering it, you'd need to break down the question and think about all those different ways you could answer it. Good questions are open. That means you can't give a yes or no answer. Good questions are specific. They're not vague, okay? So um, a, a not very good question would be something like, um, you know, what's the point of fashion or something like that? That's a very vague question. It's not specific enough to really get your teeth into it as an EPQ. If you wanted to do an EPQ about fashion, you want to look at um, men's fashion in the 1920s in America. So nailing it down a bit more closely to something specific. OK, good questions are also, I think, relevant. 
They've got to be something people care about. They've got to be something that's of interest to the world as it is right now. OK, so here's some examples of questions which I think are good questions. Here they come. These are all real questions that we've had uh, from, with EPQ students over the last few years. So how should the world deal with the challenges of water scarcity? As you can see, that's a really complex question. Um, there's no easy answer. There's no agreed answer. No one knows the answer to this. There's no one possible answer. There's lots of different approaches. And of course, it's really relevant. It matters. It matters deeply to the future of the world. What might be the impact of abolishing grammar schools? Again, this is something which is really interesting. It's very relevant. People care about it now. It's in the, you know, it comes up in the news all the time. It's something there's no answer to, no easy answer to. There might be lots of different kinds of impacts, economic impacts, social impacts, um, that sort of thing. How much are young people are influenced by what they read? OK, nice open question. And you could look at lots of different kinds of influences that might happen uh, with reading. It's specific enough, though, that you could measure it. You could actually devise some kind of test or experiment to find out how much young people are influenced by what they read. Another one from a few years back. How can phobias be treated effectively? Again, this is not something that people agree on. There's lots of different kinds of treatment. No one really knows which is the best one. So in an EPQ, you can explore which one um, is the right one. OK, so that's my run through of what questions are now. I'm just going to run through the sort of technical issues of what an EPQ is. I might go through this fairly quickly. Um, we shall see. So EPQ is one thing, OK? So it's not like a collection or a, or a portfolio of stuff. It's one single project, OK? Most people write a 5,000 word project, a written project. However, now and again, people want to make documentaries or create artifacts, make things, write um, computer code or something like that. That's called a non-written project, and that's allowed, but you also need to write a 1,000-word report, which is not very long. Um, so you do your project. You also give a presentation at the end of the process where you have questions and answers. We will do that right at the end of the process, which will be most likely in um, May. Um, We'll go through the timeline in a minute. We work on our own, so we don't have any group work. It's all individual. And there can obviously there will probably be connections with your A-level study, but what you can't do is study, or study any of the stuff that's on the A-level specification. So if you're studying um, uh, Chairman Mao for your history uh, A-level, you can't do a project on Chairman Mao for your EPQ. If you're studying Wuthering Heights for your English literature, you can't do an EPQ on Wuthering Heights. OK, make sure you don't, you know, um, get mixed up about that. EPQs need to be academic. So you can't do an EPQ on, um, I don't know, how, how should I paint the walls of my house or something like that. It needs to be research based. It needs to be based around books, basically in reading. OK, academic things. Why would you want to do an EPQ? Well, an EPQ is a chance for you to go beyond the curriculum, go beyond your A-levels, to explore something new, explore something that's uh, unfamiliar, um, go beyond the curriculum. It's also a chance for you to take stuff that you already do and accredit it. So all the stuff you're already doing, you can actually take it and get a kind of qualification for it. Um, it's also a great chance for you to develop your academic learning skills. Universities love the EPQ because it shows that you are a thinker and an academic um, researcher and you're able to make decisions about your research and be independent, all that kind of great stuff that universities love. So they will love to see an EPQ on your UCAS form. There are UCAS points available. So you, if you get an A star, you get 70 UCAS points and it goes down from there. Um, that means it's equivalent to about half an A-level. 
it's also something that if you are applying to a challenging competitive university, um, it's a really good focus for your personal statement. It's a really good focus for your interview. It will help you get noticed. It will show that you're a credible person um, from the university point of view. Some universities will actually give you a reduced offer. If you do an EPQ, they will say, OK, if you get an A or above in your EPQ, then we'll reduce your A-level offer from AAB to ABB. OK, not a massive reduction, but every little helps at university. Um, here are a few more things that I think the EPQ will help with. First of all, it helps you to develop really, really deep knowledge. If you are interested in history, wow, this is a great opportunity for you to be a really accomplished, deep seated historian. If you're interested in medicine, this is a chance for you to get a really great understanding of medicine and mastery, really, really knowing your way around the topic. And one of the great things that we always see every year with the EPQ is that when uh, students give their presentations and they have their questions and answers at the end of the presentation. My goodness me, they can answer any question that's chucked at them because they know their topic so well. They're really interested. They're really passionate. They've got a deep understanding of it. And they are the expert in the room, which is a wonderful feeling when you're um, 17 to just feel that you're smarter than all the other um, grown ups in the room. What else? Well, these kinds of things as well. So the EPQ helps you with these kinds of skills, which are really important for surviving effectively at university and in life. I think that, you know, it, it's, it's quite tough doing an EPQ. Not everyone manages it. People, do, people drop out. Um, people who do survive and do complete an EPQ quite rightly have a great sense of achievement and a sense that they've they've gone through something quite tough and they've achieved something really fantastic. So giving you that confidence as a result. Okay, this is fairly similar to what I've just said, but um, your EPQ could be based on an A-level subject. It could be about a connection between subjects. So if you're doing history and English, it could be about the history of Shakespeare's London or something like that. If you're doing French and um, physics, it could be about a French physicist. I don't know, something like that. Or it could be something else that interests you that's nothing to do with your A-levels. Um, EPQs can take many forms. As I said before, most people write the academic essay, the 5,000 word essay. Um, but other kinds of things are allowed. And if you are interested in doing something slightly different, just drop me a line and I will be able to um, advise you on that. This is the process that we go through with an EPQ. So we might start with our idea. We'll be asking questions about it. That helps determine, OK, what should we actually do? And I've asked these questions. I'm actually going to talk to someone read something, measure something, find something out, go somewhere. Then I analyze what I've done. I review it. I reflect on it. I think about it. I think about the next steps. That gives me another idea. I ask more questions and so on. So there's a cyclical structure to the EPQ process. It's something which, you know, potentially would never end. Of course, you do have to bring it to an end at some point. But that's part of the, the pleasure of it, is that it keeps on going and it keeps on reinforcing itself and your knowledge just keeps going, getting deeper and deeper. This is how we're going to do it. So in previous years, as I'm sure you're aware, we haven't started the EPQ in year 11. We started in year 12. In fact, we just started in um, quite near Christmas of year 12. So we're starting it quite a bit earlier than we normally would. So this is what I'd like us to do. First of all, I'd like you to say, and just quite soon, are you interested in doing an EPQ? Um, that is not a absolutely firm sign up, but it's a way for me to just see how many people from um, current year 11, about to be year 12s, 
um, are, are interested in doing EPQs. It makes me help. Uh, it means I can start allocating supervisors, deciding who the super supervisors will be. Then in September, I'm, I'll ask you to formally sign up um, and I'll allocate you a supervisor and we'll do initial research at that point. We'll keep on going with the question with with formulating your question. You'll be meeting regularly with me and as a group and doing initial research. Um, then in January, we hit this moment where we were actually needing to formally write a project proposal, which I will approve. Um, and then and over the spring term, we're researching, we're writing it up. Final um, project will be complete at the end of the year um, in June. Now, lots of you, I would expect, will finish earlier, and that's fine. Um, however, I'd like us to have presentations at the end of the year in July. Um, there will inevitably be some, be some people who need a bit more time, and then we'll have an additional round of presentations in October. That will be that, and then everyone will get their results in January 2021. Um, historically, at Newstead, our results have been really, really good. Last year was our best year ever, um, and we're, we're really, really happy with um, the, our record as, as a kind of high-achieving school with EPQs. I'll just quickly run through these. These are just in, interesting um, recent titles that I think are, are, you know, really fascinating. So this is one from a, a few years ago now. Why do we swear? This was a student who went on to study linguistics. She was really interested in um, language. She was also interested in psychology. So this one was a combination of a linguistics study of, you know, kind of where swear words come from and a psychology study of, you know, the function of swearing um, from a psychological point of view. This one, typography and visual communication. This was a someone who was doing design and um, she was she used her um, her kind of design brain and her psychology brain um, to explore this really, really interesting, fascinating collision of ideas of um, the, uh, the impact of typography. This is a really interesting topic. She really went for it with this. She interviewed several MPs. Um, she looked deeply into the history of the 20th century and, and kind of the, 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 the way, the, the, the growth of um, women in parliament and what, you know, kind of where the glass ceiling is and why, why um, so few women are, are able to um, be represented in parliament. Um, this was a, a chemistry one, so thinking about, sorry, biology one, um, thinking about the how pesticides work. Um, this was, again, a really high achieving one. This is just a, someone who loved Chinese poetry. So she, she was reading Chinese poetry on her own and she wanted to find out more about Chinese poetry. And she just went off and read a load of Chinese poetry, read a load of books about Chinese poetry and translated her own Chinese poetry, astonishing um, stuff. She got full marks, um, very different sort of project, um, kind of business-led uh, project, thinking about motivation in, in business and how different models of motivation can uh, have an impact on performance. So I hope that whets your appetite for the EPQ. I would love it if we have lots and lots and lots of year 11 signing up. Right now we have about 105 year 12s who've signed up, um, which is about two thirds of the year group. Um, I'm expecting something similar from you lot. And I really would like it if as many of you as possible can sign up. Now that date is completely wrong. I apologize. I thought I'd change that. Change that. Um, I'm gonna send this uh link out to you by email um in fact hopefully as you're listening to this you've already had the email the date though um is going to be may the 8th okay so that's quite soon that's just to register your initial interest you don't need to commit yourself you don't need to um give me a title or anything like that uh it's just a sort of vague idea so if you're interested in ufos or you're interested in the chemistry of um explosives or something 
then you just write that down. Okay, so that's where we are. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and I'm really looking forward to working with you all on the EPQ. Um, please do sign up in the next two weeks and I will be in you all to tell you about the online meeting that we're going to have um, for you to come and find out more about the EPQ and actually start the process off. I should say though, please don't wait for me to, to, to fire the starting pistol. Please go ahead, start reading stuff, start finding out more about your chosen topic, um, watch videos, read books, uh, do everything you can to find out more about something that's interesting to you. And the great news is that through the EPQ, you'll be able to get a qualification. And I guess this will be the, the first qualification that you get as sixth form students, which is wonderful. Something really something to look forward to. OK, thank you very much for listening. Um, please send me an email if you want to ask any questions at all about what I've said today or if you want to find out more. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.